DaVinci Resolve is an awesome free tool that you can download and get started using. If you know Premiere, you'll love DaVinci Resolve. Even if you know After Effects, you'll also find a place for DaVinci Resolve in your pipeline. Besides being free, it has some awesome built-in effects. There are some limitations with the free version, but for the most part, you'll be able to do all your editing within DaVinci Resolve and never hit those limits. Also, you could just see it as a finishing tool. Work in Premiere or After Effects, bring in your finished product here and tweak it even a little further. From this screen, click on New Project. Call the project Basics or whatever you want to call it. As a quick overview, this is where you'll put your media clips. This is your program window. Down here are your major sections. And if you roll your mouse over the section weight, you'll get a little helper tip. Media, this section is for creating cuts. Editing, which, and this is the timeline interface that is most like Premiere. Fusion, which is this node-based environment, and we'll take a quick look at this later for wiring up your scene. You can include objects such as models and have them render in line with the rest of your video. Color correction. Audio. And finally, your render output, delivery. Starting with media, let's get some media in here. I'm gonna drag these clips and just place them within the media section. I'm not changing the frame rates. The next part is about dragging your clips to a timeline or creating a new timeline. If this is the first time you're using DaVinci Resolve, you might want to align your timeline start with what you're used to in Premiere or After Effects. Go under DaVinci Resolve, Preferences. Click on User, click on Editing, Start Time Code. Right now it's set for an hour. You want your time code to start at zeros, just like After Effects and Premiere. Just edit that to be zero. If you're coming from Premiere or After Effects, you probably want this to always start at zero. And click on Save. Now the timeline options, you can think of a timeline as a sequence or a composition if you're thinking After Effects. You can select all the clips or just a few clips or none of the clips, and you could create a new timeline by right-clicking, create new timeline. Give the timeline a name. I'm going to leave it timeline one. This is the start time code that you just adjusted under preferences. It's easy to add video tracks, so this is all ready to go. This is showing that it is an empty timeline. Click on create and you're ready to get started. You're currently in the cuts interface. If you need to see a bigger view of your media, just click here, click on a media clip, press the space bar to play that media clip. If you want your media clip or your program window to loop, click this icon. And then when it hits the end, it's going to loop. Jumping back to the cut interface, drag out a clip to the timeline right down there and drag out a secondary clip. Pressing the space bar will play the video clips of your timeline. You could drag the timeline by just clicking in the timeline with the left mouse button and just dragging it back and forth. You could also drag a bigger overview up here. These two work together. This is for local view, your magnified view, and your global view of your timeline. If you pop into the edit workspace, you'll see that it's very familiar. Jump back to cut and let's go over some of the key ways to edit video in DaVinci Resolve. Cut right through all the timelines. Press the command or control key and that backslash. Use the cursor to move over by frame or shift cursor, left and right arrow, to jump multiple frames. To create a new cut, press the control key and the backslash or command key and the backslash, and there's a new cut. To remove this and to create a ripple delete at the same time, select these clips and press the delete key. And there's a ripple delete. You can undo that. 
just to delete one of these. Select it and press the delete key. If you don't want to cut through both of the tracks, maybe you just want to edit the bottom track. You can select that track and when you press the command or control backslash, the cutting tool, which in this application is the scissor, will focus in on just that track. Moving somewhere else, selecting that clip, control. And then press delete and you remove that section. To extend back this section, just roll over the edge, the end of the clips that you just cut and just drag it back. To cut both or all the tracks again, deselect the tracks and that's by just clicking in an empty space. None of the tracks are selected, pressing the control or command cut, press the command or control backslash and that creates another cut. And to remove these clips, press the delete key. If you don't want that ripple to happen, just select the top one and press the delete key. To nudge a clip over, select a clip and use the comma or period on the keyboard. The period will just move it over by a frame. To the right, a comma will move it back. Holding down the shift period will jump it by multiple frames and the comma, same thing in the other direction. To move between clips, use the up and down arrows. Up arrow will go back towards the beginning, jumping between the cuts between segments. Pressing the control and left and right arrows will move the selection between the different clips. So control, left and right, moves between clips. The left and right arrow will just move the playback head and the up and down arrow moves between the cuts of clips. To render all this out, go to the last icon down here, which is delivery. What gets rendered out, it's the active workspace, this bar. If you want less to be rendered, just drag that end backwards. If this is all you want rendered out, go to the left side, you give the file name, browse to where to save the file on your computer, pick the file format, format is QuickTime, you can select MP4 from that menu, the resolution, frame rate, quality, and when you're ready to render, Click Add to Render Queue. All your render jobs will end up here. If you want to render one at a time, just click Render All right now. If you want to add more timelines before you render, just repeat this process. Click on Render All. And this is the progress of rendering. And that's it, your clip is rendered. You could preview it. Let's add a little camera shake to the opening clip. Go to effects and click the word effects. And here's a whole bunch of effects you could go explore. If you want to find a particular one within the search box, type in the name of that effect and drag it to a clip or the whole timeline if this was a nested timeline. Scrub to the beginning and press the space bar. And there's our camera shake. Off to the right in the inspector, this is the inspector, click on the effects tab and now you could turn on and off this effect and adjust it. That's with it off and here is the camera shake on. To adjust it, maybe you want a soft scale. Decrease the speed and decrease the amount of scaling of the motion. Go back to the beginning and press the space bar. Maybe I want a little more than what appears like nothing. Increasing the motion scale and increasing the speed a little bit. 
And here's a soft movement, like you're in a kayak looking at the island. Now it's a soft camera shake, like you're in a kayak, slowly going towards the island. Maybe you want to nest this timeline within another timeline, just like you can nest sequences in Premiere or pre-compositions, nest compositions within compositions in After Effects. Click on the media pool, right click here in the empty space, create new timeline. And this will be my second timeline, create. Drag to this new timeline, timeline one. And this will create a nested timeline. Going back to effects, we can add a Gaussian blur on top of all this. To, to preview the Gaussian blur or, or any effect, just roll over the effect. Then you can see it previewed in the program area. This seems like a fun one, this zoom blur. To remove your effects, click on Effects right here in the tab, and then click the trash can, Delete Filter. You might want to adjust the color of a particular clip. Let me go within this timeline, and to get into this timeline, to get within this timeline, click on Media Pool, double click Timeline 1. and that will display this timeline. To adjust the contrast and the brightness of this clip, select the clip, go throw away any extra parts of that clip. Click to go to the color workspace. Click on this first target, color wheels, and you can adjust the contrast here, along with the shadows and the highlights. You can make this a little more shadowy and increase the highlights. You can play with the contrast up here, more contrast or less contrast. Then go back to your timeline, which was timeline number two by going to cut, double clicking timeline two, and you can preview it here. Spacebar to play and spacebar to stop. Going back to the color wheel, go back to your clip area, under Cuts, let's add a title by clicking on Titles. There's some samples you can roll over. And as you scrub, you can see how the title is going to come on in, dragging that block above the other tracks. Press the spacebar to preview. To edit this text, click on this track. Return to the beginning of your time and press the spacebar to preview. Last thing to cover is animation. Just clicking on the media pool to import an image. I'm going to drag this PNG to the media bin, placing the PNG above the title track. Maybe now that we're on this island, someone wants to order some Uber Eats. The new version of Uber Eats that parachutes in the food. To move this object that's locked right now, click on the transformation tool. Go to this icon right here. Show your tools and then go right here to click on the transform and now you can move your art around. You can move it a little off screen. Say around here. Going to frame, going to the beginning of this timeline. And then Spectre for the video, go to position and click on this little keyframe icon to put your first keyframe in. Move in time. That just means move the timeline. Drag this image down, off screen. And press the space bar to play.
You can move between keyframes by clicking the arrows. There's only two keyframes here. Click this icon to hide the tools. Go into effects, you get this screen, just hit not yet. Search for camera shake and apply the camera shake to this parachute. Just click and drag it to the parachute and press the space bar. Now we get that movement that wasn't there before of the parachute going swaying left and right. With the camera shake off and go to effects under inspector, you click on off. It's a very straight path. The camera shake adds a little movement. This way you don't have to key all those frames.